Hello all. Welcome to the presentation of my paper, The Case of Sparkle Union Filter and Disting. My name is Medha Atre and I work as a scientific research consultant. So Sparkle basic graph pattern queries are similar to SQL inner joins. These joins are associative, commutative and hence reorderable. Meaning that if a basic graph pattern query has three joins over four triple patterns, then these three joins can be evaluated in any order without affecting the correctness of the results. Now optionals, unions, filters, disting, these components make useful for querying semi-structured data. They constitute a large percentage of user queries and this is derived from query log analysis, but they put restrictions on the reorderability of joins in the query, which is allowed in pure BGPs. In this paper, we extend the evaluation techniques of previously published BGP optional queries to the other Sparkle constructs such as unions, filters and distings. Specifically, we identify types of Sparkle queries within these constructs, which can and cannot benefit from the BGP optional evaluation techniques. Let us go over some background and terminology that is used in this presentation as well as in the paper. So in a well-designed query for any sub pattern P equal to BJ left auto join BK in the query, if a join variable in BK appears outside P, then it must appear in BJ2. Here BJ and BK are basic graph patterns, but this property applies transitively to all the sub patterns in the query. In a semi join, it is a partial join that removes tuples in only one of the two tables without joining them fully. Notationally, a semi join is represented uh, as given on the slide. And this means that we leave only triples in the left side table TJ for which every unique value of attribute A and here attribute A is equivalent to a sparkle join variable. So every unique value of attribute A from TJ also appears in the right hand side table TK. If it does not, then those triples are removed. A triple pattern is said to have minimal triples associated with it if each triple forms part of at least one final result. There is a property of cyclicity of a or acyclicity of inner joints, which I will not go in detail in this talk due to time constraint. But the property is such that if an inner join query is acyclic, then a bottom up followed by top down pass of semi joins on the graph of tables leaves minimal triples in the query. That is the triple pass patterns that are there in the query. Now nullification is an operator to nullify variable bindings in the query results that are inconsistent with the join constraints. When can it happen that the results are inconsistent? If an inner join is rewritten as left auto join as a part of query optimization to use the selectivity of triple patterns. So this particular technique is used in BGP optional optimization techniques and it has been elaborated in my previously published paper which focuses only on BGP optional uh, pattern queries. And result R1 is subsumed within R2 if for every non-null variable binding in R1, R2 has same bindings and R2 has more non-null variable bindings than R1 or R1 and R2 are exactly the same. So this is an example that R2 has three variable bindings and none of them are null and R1 has also three variable bindings but two of them are null and then A's bindings in both R1 and R2 are exactly same. So in that case, R1 is supposed to be uh, subsumed within R2. Best match is an operator which removes subsumed results. And in our above example, R1 will be removed in the above example if we run a best match operator on uh, the results having R1 and R2. So prune triples is an algorithm uh, published in one of my previous papers that uses semi joins to remove unwanted triples associated with the triple patterns. It in ensures minimal triples for acyclic queries. Multiway pipeline joins is used along with prune triples and it is similar to pipeline joins of the SQL. Although in the context of Sparkle and RDF, uh, we use bitmats associated with the triple patterns and bitmats can be considered equivalent to tables. Now we will go over some of the important properties of well-designed BGP optional queries. So if a well-designed BGP optional query is acyclic, then the triples associated with each triple pattern in the query can be reduced to minimal using the prune triples algorithm. Secondly, 
the nullification and best match operators are not needed even after reordering the joins as long as we never execute an original left auto join as inner join now uh, these terminologies and the concepts are elaborately discussed in the paper at, in the appendix of the paper we have also given an example of nullification and best match i request audience to uh, go over that now having seen the background and terminologies we come to the main contributions in this paper and first we deal with the sparkle union construct so for dealing with sparkle unions we write each bgp optional union query using union free bgp optional blocks and an example is given over here so let's say we have a query b1 union b2 which is left outer join together Uh, with B3, and then the whole thing is union with a left outer join of B4 and B5. So in this B1, B2, B3, and B4 left outer join B5 together are the union-free BGP optional components. Treating each union-free component as an independent query, we run prune triples on them. So remember that we cannot consider B1 union B2 left outer join with B3 as a union free component. We have to consider B1 B2 B3 separately, and B4 B5 we can consider as a one independent query. After doing this, after running prune triples, we bring the query in what is called as union normal form by using the following rewrite rules. So the first rewrite rule is that if you have union of two patterns left outer joined with another pattern then it is equivalent to union of left outer joins of those patterns similarly if you are unioning two patterns and then doing an inner join with another pattern then it is equivalent to doing union of inner join of those uh, independent patterns third rewrite rule is actually a, such a rule that it doesn't ensure the equivalence of results of the original query and the rewritten query but we discuss how we can uh, still make use of this rewrite rule in the further part of the talk so p1 left auto join p1 union p3 can we still rewrite it as p1 left auto join p1 union p1 left auto join p3 so uh, using these three rewrite rules now the query given in the uh, first part of the uh, slide can be rewritten as b1 left auto join b3 union b2 left auto join b3 union B4 left auto join B5. Next, we run multi-way pipeline join on each subquery in this union normal form. So, in our case, these are the three subqueries. Then we do nullification on each subquery if the subquery is cyclic. Again, uh, the reasons for this and uh, proofs for uh, this, these particular operations are given elaborately uh, in the text of the paper. after doing this multi way pipeline join on each subquery we do a union all results of all the subqueries remember that union all is different from the sqls union which uh, ensures duplicate removal but union all keeps duplicates as well then we run the best match operator if the nullification operation was used in at least one subquery pi in the unf while generating its final results or while bringing the original query in unf we use the third rewrite rule which doesn't always ensure that the both side results are same one point to note is that sparkle union properties are uh, different from typical sql unions so having seen the procedure to handle uh, unions let us go over some important observations so minimum union is another name for best match operator minimum union removes subsumed results as well remember that the typical union all does not uh, remove duplicates and it does not remove subsumed re uh, results as well the next uh, observation is that if we use the third rewrite rule of uh, bringing the query in union normal form and then if we do minimum union on the results of the original query and minimum union on the results of the rewritten query then they both are same the second important observation is that the nullification and best match operation can be avoided if each subquery in union normal form is acyclic and the third rewrite rule of bringing the query in unf is never used so now we discuss sparkle filters 
Sparkle filters are Boolean expressions that are to be evaluated on each generated results on the, of the pattern on which they are applied. For the context of this paper, we have assumed safe filter, which means that if a filter expression is applied on pattern Px, then all the variables that appear in the filter expression must appear in Px as well. In addition to the three rewrite rules that we saw earlier, we use another rewrite rule that is push in the filters, which means that if a filter expression is applied on left auto join between two patterns, then the filter can just be applied on the left hand side pattern that is P1 and we need not apply that on P2. The reason we can do this is because in a left outer join, the left hand side pattern P1 and its variable bindings always dominate the right hand side pattern uh, P2. So after doing uh, pushing in of the filters but without applying any other rewrite rules, we run prune triples on each union free subcomponent of the Sparkle BGP optional union filter query and this is same as what we did in case of uh, unions. After running prune triples, we bring the query in UNF with additional rewrite rule, this fourth rewrite rule, the uh, uh, another one is push in filters which we uh, already applied. So in addition to the previous three rules and this uh, these two rules, we bring the query in UNF and this rewrite rule is that if a filter expression is applied on union of two patterns, then it is equivalent to doing union of filter applied on these two patterns separately. After bringing the query in UNF, we again similar to the unions, we run multi-way pipeline join on each subquery in UNF. Next, we do union all of the results from all the subqueries and run best match operation if and only if the third rewrite rule of bringing the query in UNF was used or at least one variable binding was nullified during the nullification operation in multi-way joins because the subquery was cyclic or the filter condition necessitated nullification. And from all this, basically, we make another important observation that if the result of the original query is RO and the result of the rewritten query using all the five re uh, rewrite rules is RR, and if we run minimum union operation on both RO and RR, then the results are exactly same. Just doing union or doesn't ensure that, but minimum union operation ensures this. Now we come to the last component that is uh, distinct. So distinct is used to remove duplicates uh, and duplicates can happen in, uh, in case of Sparkle query if two variables are connected with each other uh, through another variable like M in this case. So a pair of actor and director are connected through a movie variable and if those actors and directors have worked in multiple movies then we will get duplicate results uh, without the distinct clause and distinct ensures uh, getting the uh, unique uh, results. So our purpose is to remove the unwanted variable M without changing the correctness of the results. For this, we use Boolean matrix multiplication of bitmaps associated with triple patterns. And in this, we uh, carve out a minimal covering subgraph. Now it is a graph over graph of triple patterns that covers all variables appearing in distinct and no other strict subgraph of MCS covers all the distinct variables. Now let us go over how this distinct operator and the Boolean matrix multiplication can be used for different class of queries. First, let's consider acyclic BGPs. In that case, we can carve out a MCS over GOT, which is graph of triple patterns, and we can use BMM on triple patterns in MCS to eliminate unwanted variables and bitmats. Then we are left with bitmats containing only the variables that appear in the distinct class and we can run multi-way pipeline joins on these bitmats to generate results and in this case we don't have to run explicit deduplication. In case of acyclic BGP optional queries, the query can, any BGP optional query can be represented as follows, uh, B1 left auto join, B2 left auto join, B3, uh, so on and so forth. In this case, B1 is considered to be master of B2, B2 is master of B3 and so on and so forth. So B1 is the leftmost master. So we can carve out an MCS over the GOT of this BGP optional query as well. And uh, there can be two cases. Either the leftmost master B1 is part of MCS or all the distinct variables are in slaves that is the B1 is not part of MCS. 
So an important property is that we can use Boolean matrix multiplication only if B1 is part of MCS. In case of cyclic BGP optional queries, we cannot ensure that the triples can be reduced to minimal and this is part of the property acyclic versus cyclic queries. So we cannot use uh, Boolean matrix multiplication to eliminate unwanted variables and we have to resort to the uh, standard method of first enumerating all the results and then removing the duplicates. In case of queries with unions and filters also we cannot use uh, uh, Boolean matrix multiplication and let's see why. So as we saw in the previous part of the talk, we apply prune triples uh, only on the union free subcomponents of the query. So minimality of triples across the entire query is not guaranteed when we run prune triples only in subcomponents. Uh, in case of filters, basically filters may need nullification and best match which instantaneously alters the minimality of triples and to use the uh, algorithm presented for a distinct uh, uh, operator, uh, we have to ensure that the triples associate, uh, associated with triple patterns in the query are minimal. So this concludes my talk and I thank you all for attending my presentation.